Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Gordon. We are back with another video. Today, we're looking at early subnets and thinking about how they compare to early internet startups. As always, if you enjoy the content, please make sure to smash that thumbs up button below. Do it right now before we get into it. Make sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification icon, and you've got a completely free copy of the rise of Bitcoin in the description below this video. Grab that now and let's get into it. Okay, so we are in a world of artificial intelligence right now where you have the biggest corporations on the entire planet basically at war trying to get the most attention possible in the AI sphere. You've got the likes of Google with Gemini, Meta and their Llama. You've got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, OpenAI, Claude Anthropic, all of the largest corporations on the planet are all trying to get a slice of the artificial intelligence pie, and they're trying to garner the largest amount of market share possible. But these corporations, these big tech giants, were not always huge tech giants similar to what they're like today. And, you know, we have to cast our minds back to the late 90s, early 2000s with the rise and fall of the dot com boom to understand what played out here in the historical roadmap and maybe we're going to see a huge boom in the subnet industry over the coming years do we have to have a similar rise and fall with the subnet boom in the next few years i don't know that remains to be seen but the valuations that we're seeing with some of these subnets are akin to some of these early stage internet startups and what I want to do is kind of compare and contrast that because back in the late 90s, you saw some of these tech giants like Amazon at the time, Yahoo, Google, all creating um, uh, and establishing market share in the US stock market as burgeoning, growing tech startups. They were kind of paving a new era for digital companies in that time period. And we saw a huge run up with the stock market back through into March of 2000 in that year. And if I jump over to the S&P, we can see that here on the chart with a huge run up in the stock market and the S&P in particular, going from you know this 570 area all the way up to 1527 by you know Q1, Q2 of 2000. And then we saw a huge drawdown for the next um, 18 to 24 months. So this dot-com crash happened because so many of those corporations ended up being very overvalued. Obviously, we saw a number of winners stay the course, i.e. Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Yahoo, etc. But there was a vast amount of companies that did not make it. And again, when we think about the current AI leader valuations being similar to those of early stage internet startups, you're seeing companies like Claude Anthropic, OpenAI, Cursor generating hundreds of millions of dollars, raising hundreds of millions of dollars, raising billions of dollars in order to prop up their centralized AI business models. And again, there's debate or at least room for debate as to whether that is a truly better use of capital and time compared to running open source permissionless subnets on an ecosystem like BitTensor Tau. So investing in leading AI companies, um, you know, is very similar to investing in subnets with where we're at today in the trajectory of the Tau and subnet ecosystem. And it just reminds us a lot of what happened back here in the dot-com boom and the potential for many of those centralized AI businesses like Cursor, Claude Anthropic, OpenAI to be very overvalued at this moment in time and makes a good argument for the subnet valuations and where they're at today being potentially very undervalued compared to their centralized counterparty. So that's the main theme I wanted to kind of get across in today's video. But you might also be asking yourself, you know, why are subnet valuations not sky high right now? We're going to touch on that in a moment. But this artificial intelligence market global forecast over the next number of years, we're set to see compounded annual growth rate somewhere around 35% every single year from 2025 through 2030. And so this entire market is not showing any sign of slowing down. We know on a daily basis, many um, professionals are using the likes of Claude, Anthropic, Cursor, OpenAI, ChatGPT, building it into their daily workflows and the demand for artificial intelligence and intuitive products is definitely not slowing down. So we're gonna see that growth continue. And I do think we're gonna see the growth with subnets 
and some of that valuations continue to move to the upside as well. And I've spoken about this a few times on the channel, you know, the speed at which um, these different companies have the uh, or had the ability to reach $1 trillion in market cap. Bitcoin took 12 years, but then when you extrapolate out for some of these large corporations, it took Microsoft 44 years to hit a $1 trillion valuation. It took Apple 42 years. It took Amazon 24 years, Google 21 years. And the case being made here is, can Tau reach a $1 trillion market cap quicker than Bitcoin in that 12-year period? And that's what this projection is looking at, a $62,500 Tau price by the year 2020, 2031, if we follow Reed's law, and if we see the price of Tau and the market cap of Tau getting to that $1 trillion mark in a roughly speaking 10-year period, okay? So again, why are subnet valuations not sky high? In my opinion, it comes down to information asymmetry. Simply not enough people understand what's happening under the hood with different subnets. It does take a bit of learning and understanding even how to view subnets, view data around subnets, understand subnet alpha pricing, understands how subnets compete against each other, but are simultaneously contributing to growing the town network as a whole. It does take some research. And when you think about the people and the profile of the people who are investing in crypto in general, and then thinking about the technical nuances with the BitTensor Tau ecosystem, it takes a layer of diving deep under the hood to really get familiar with what subnets are doing, how they're growing, the incentive mechanisms with subnet alpha tokens versus Tau, and all the intricate details and how every subnet has its own value proposition. That is the main reason, in my opinion, for why subnets are not sky high already. You could also argue that many of those centralized companies that we mentioned are also significantly overvalued, and we might have to see the equilibrium swing back in the direction of decentralized permissionless protocols like those subnets on Tau over the coming months and years. So a few specific useful resources for learning about BitTensor. I wanted to highlight, obviously, the BitTensor website. This is not the best resource, just being completely honest. And again, the reason for that being that, you know, you're, you're met with this rotating graphic on the website. You have to start diving deeper to really understand what's going on under the hood. And so useful resources like taustats.io are very helpful for understanding all the intricacies of the different subnets on a deeper level. This is kind of like getting into the engine room, getting under the hood, understanding the emissions for all those individual subnets, how they're competing against each other, how the performance of the price action for the alpha token is moving over time. What is the market cap looking like? Um, how much liquidity is there in those pools? You can get all that data under the hood over here on Taustats. And so it is a very useful resource if you're looking to learn more about BitTensor Tau. Another very useful research resource is the Revenue Search podcast from the DSV Fund. Mark and Siam are interviewing lots of different founders and creators um, in terms of all those who are pushing the limits with the Tau ecosystem, creating subnets, uh, building, creating revenue. They have different founders um, and different thought leaders or KOLs in the Tau space on their Revenue Search podcast. And so the Revenue Search podcast obviously being hosted by DSV and Siam and Mark is a very useful resource that you can check out yourself. I wanted to highlight a couple of other quick subnets that might be of interest to you. Ridges AI over the past couple of months has been on a run in terms of the amount of price appreciation. If I jump over to Tau Stats and we click into Ridges, it's now the second largest subnet, I believe, by total emissions at this moment in time. That will change and fluctuate over time, but we can see that the price is up 10% in the past day and zooming out here onto the one day period, we can see that it's been moving very much up and to the right here over the past month or two. And if we measure that, even just since the end of June, technically speaking, we're up 11 to 1200% on the price of Ridges Alpha token. Ridges is basically a decentralized competitor to the likes of Cursor AI, creating um, autonomous incentivized agentic training so that you can use these agents to help create and write code for different applications and decentralized applications that you might be building. If you come over to the explore agents area, you can see how the model is improving over time. Anyone can contribute here in order to actually win and earn um, a daily prize pool of $40,000. Every single day is up for grabs. If you can create a model um, that 
outpaces their baseline and is the best model on that given day. You can earn and win 40,000 US dollars. Very exciting to see the growth happening with Ridges and how they're really pushing the limits to be a real competitor to their centralized counterparties. The next subnet I wanted to mention is called Bitmind. Again, Bitmind is a decentralized deep fake detection protocol and subnet built on the Tau network. Again, using and harnessing the power of artificial intelligence to ultimately understand if certain pieces of content are indeed human generated versus machine or AI generated is what Bitmind specializes in. Again, if I upload an image, a real photograph, it can tell me, is that a photograph that's human generated or AI generated? It's telling me here, this particular image, 100% confidence, it is not AI generated. And indeed it is um, a, a real photo that was taken. So again, the power of these different subnets being built out on top of Tau is only improving and the quality of them is only increasing over time. I do want to mention um, the DSV fund very briefly. DSV fund is a BitTensor subnet hedge fund specifically focused exclusively on BitTensor. They are investing in the Tau ecosystem. They are doing OTC deals with a number of different um, subnets in the ecosystem like Ridges and like BitCast, who I've mentioned multiple times on the channel. BitCast are obviously another subnet that have seen some very good growth over the past couple of months. And so DSV Fund exclusively focusing on BitTensor, looking for asymmetric upside with their hedge fund, allocating OTC deals into a number of different subnets. And so I'm going to leave a link for the DSV fund in the description below this video for you to check out their website, check out and explore more about Siam, Mark and their entire team. Like I said, the DSV hedge fund is also running the Revenue Search podcast, so you can check that out and all the interviews with different founders there. And obviously, if you're interested in partnering with them, um, investing with them or allocating capital, <clears throat> you can check them out here, schedule a call with the DSV fund and get in contact with Mark and Siam directly. So very exciting stuff happening in the Tau ecosystem in general, guys. Check out DSV Fund. Check out some of those subnets. Check out the resources that I mentioned, like Tau Stats, like the Revenue Search podcast. LearnBitTensor.org is another very good resource as well. Investing in these leading AI companies um, is very similar to subnets, like I said. So getting exposure to these subnets, I think, is going to put you in a better position compared to investing in those centralized corporations like Amazon, um, like Facebook, like Meta, et cetera, et cetera. I think the exponential upside or the asymmetric upside you can see from investing in subnets is going to be very, very valuable. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you got any value at all out of this deep dive into BitTensor Tau, DSV Fund, and everything happening with subnets, please just take three seconds, smash that thumbs up button right there under my finger on the screen. It only takes three seconds. It really helps to spread the good word and I would truly appreciate it. Remember to hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit that bell notification icon as well. And I want to see your comments below this video. You know, where do you think these valuations lie with subnets in comparison to some early stage internet leaders? Where do you think we're getting in terms of overvaluations with some of these um, businesses like Anthropic, Cursor, and OpenAI? Drop a comment below the video. I want to hear from you guys. Make sure to subscribe, like I said. And again, you've got a completely free copy of the Rise of Bitcoin waiting for you in the description. Grab that down below and we'll catch you in the next one.